All right, I am currently five minutes away from a client. Uh, I got a phone call yesterday uh, about someone who basically sold everything, had a bus built here in Florida in Clearwater, and had solar and electrical, the whole, the whole thing built. And they're having some issues, troubleshooting solar. Somehow in the, the network, the Schooly community, they sent a uh, message or they contacted some friends those friends referenced me so we we got into conversation and now i'm here to take a look at this bus when she called me i basically she started explaining and i stopped her maybe like 10 seconds in i said hang on a minute uh i'm pretty sure i've heard this story before and i kind of explained the 15 or 20 other stories and how it always goes down it tends to be that a someone steps into the space they have some carpentry experience they have i don't know some experience and they decide i can build schoolies so they completely rebrand re their social media and they say i'm a schoolie and a tiny home builder despite having never built a schoolie or a tiny home and despite having never lived in a schoolie on the road which is a very different animal this means they usually wind up bidding out a job underbidding the job which is not a nefarious thing it's neglect it's ignorance but um that's neither here nor there because in the end or, or through the middle of the install they tend to get overwhelmed realize they're not making money and then they wind up having to make compromises and starts they start taking shortcuts then by the time they get to the end of the job they really haven't made money or they've screwed over the client in order to make money or to mitigate their losses well then this they make it look really good on social media instagram they wind up building a brand and it's very very terrible and i deal with this all the time with clients particularly with solar because even if they know how carpentry and some of those things they don't know solar they don't know electric so that's the part that you never almost never see photos of on these builds but the builds are all instagram worthy and they look really good they make it look like it's awesome but they actually don't have any context in the schoolie world They've never lived in a schoolie. They don't know what it takes. So we're going to go through this bus that is like, has been delivered. This is a full complete install uh, or build that has been delivered complete. Uh, they've had to come back twice now, I think, to make a couple repairs. They've had a second person come in uh, to the tune of almost $2,000 to do, to work on the solar and uh, upgraded a few of the parts there that uh, burned up and uh, smoked up didn't really catch fire but it smoked up sparked so I'm gonna take a look walk through this and we'll see where we land All right, this is the bus. It's got the DT-466, International 3800, 466E. I guess I'll have to ask and see if they, uh, the builder did the paint job. All right, I have not been in the bus yet. This is uh, this is first walkthrough.
Not sure what was used to secure the ceiling. Because there's a... Oh, it looks like they tried screws. That didn't work. So now it's held up with glue, it looks like, and nails, little uh, penny nails. This is a leaking skylight. They just hopped up with and uh, how to repair it, which it still leaked despite the metal rubber tape and uh, spraying Flexi all over the place. This burner evidently uh, wasn't working or they got it. It was not designed for propane, but for the other gas and shot up flames like five or six inches uh, when he was demoing it. So he's like, oh, better fix that. So apparently he, his fix was to order a whole nother one. But then for some reason, he did not replace the whole assembly. He just replaced some of the parts underneath. My guess is that the other one did not fit the cutout that he made for this. So he tried to cobble it together. That is speculation. The electric is down here, but I'm going to spend more time on that later. One thing I see, this is a, uh, looks like laminate floor. It seems to be a floating floor. Um, but I, because of the pictures I looked at, I did see that the floating floor isn't able to float because they put all the floor down and then built on top of it. That's not, that's not really ideal. Probably will cause issues later. The mini split I can see is not level. And it's probably, uh, I think they have to hook the other drain up. So they've got it tilted in one direction so that the water drains out towards that side. So that's a, that's a uh, competency thing. If, you, if you've never done a mini split in a bus, you, you learn that you can't just hook the one drain up, drain up. You have to do both of them. And checking out the drain. He didn't do both of the mini split drains and... All the copper lines seem unprotected for quite a ways. This is a delivered bus, fully complete, ready to go. Um, this is the shower. This is unfinished wood. Not, like all of this is not even, not finished at all. Looks like they got some PVC rack here, cut up, cobbled together. It's a water heater, which apparently does work. Camp Lux, not familiar with those models. And this is the water heater, but this is the curtain rack. But obviously that's not going to be ideal having your a curtain here next to the heater. Got a, your typical nature's head toilet. Not a fan, not my preference, but 
not too much criticism there. Everyone does it for their first toilet. This is also leaking, gotta figure that out. I can kind of see up in, well, where are the, you can see there's the foam. So none of that's really finished, but they do have some insulation, so some's better than nothing. According to what I saw on social media, they did the, the easiest way, which is to leave the metal roof, do some furring strips, attach something to that, and that's the quick and dirty way of insulating a bus by doing it poorly. Now let's take a look underneath. None of this appears to be there. Work will go to the other side. So we've got some a chintzy unpainted uh, rack here. So that's galvanized, but that right there is just raw steel, mild steel, with a little cute bolt. That's definitely not uh, hard steel, so all that'll rust. Then we got some plumbing pipes crossing. There's some uh, plumbing right there. Let's see how that's attached. Well, it's being held down somehow. All right, so that looks to be the drain for the shower, which somehow goes uphill. I'm really not exactly sure what's going on there and where that drains. That goes uphill at like 45 degree angle or I guess not quite 45, but this seems to be, uh, this is another drain. So then the drain from the other side that I couldn't tell what was going on with it, it appears to combine right there, but it goes uphill like the whole way essentially so from from where that one was is so that goes uphill I'm not sure that's gonna be good now this is one that she told me about or I saw when she shared before but she paid for a Pioneer 9k mini split but this is an Olga forget the brand but also a poorly welded, self-tapped. The split's not installed with the pads that are included, which dampen the vibration and all of, all of that. And they left the caps off. She did purchase a vacuum for pulling vacuum on the system, which I guess they reimbursed her for, they bought from her. But, uh, and looky, look at this. They, uh, oh, they're just kind of loose in there. They, I guess they didn't want to spend the 25 cent for the, the actual nut that holds that in secured. So we've got Romex, which is 20, uh, or uh, 20 amp circuit. 12 AWG, so that's correct. But uh, this here is just kind of taped in, so I guess that was a hurried job. And the drain's making a big loop up and around there. That's really not helpful. 
Not sure why they did that. And then mini split comes this way. Inside like so. That's also not sealed. And it looks like they just painted the entire thing white, including those top lights up there. Some of these windows they painted as well. I think that was intentional, I'm guessing. And I guess this is the fill. All right, so this is the interior. They've just got this. This insulation is just like, you know, got half inch styrofoam basically falling off. I guess they just did some cheap glue. And then uh, I guess this is the drain for the AC. I guess that's the power for the AC. You just pick a pick a spot, drill a hole right through the floor. And uh, then again, you can see that the furring strips, they probably didn't address anything on the floor. They probably just ripped it up, put in these one buys added that half inch of foam, which really isn't even the same thickness of that, but it was really cheap. So then you add this on top of it, you can call it, I guess you call that insulation. So let's see what's going on here. Uh, I guess know exactly what that is except for maybe a drain dropping down that seems fine pex tubing seems fine I'm not too uh, not too bothered by this I mean the Romex stuff that could be done much better obviously could be tied up somewhere but and this I don't know what they got going on here but uh, it's tape instead of, I don't know. So electrical, this line was just run from somewhere to somewhere. And they've got, oh, a little styrofoam is what's going on for this. So, they did uh, almost no insulation down here. That's just some styrofoam, like a half inch, and then big three quarter inch for the floor. So not sure what this wire is either. All right, this is the finished work of the door. Eleven nine two thousand sixteen on the fuel filter. They did supply the bus for her as well. It supposedly has lower hours. Can't really comment too much on that. And I don't know how much they said they did on the mechanic side. I guess I'll get some of that information here soon. Now, I don't know if she paid for a, uh, a paint job on the radiator, but she got that too. Probably at no extra charge. So they painted the school bus, some brush on job. Uh, and it looks good on the outside, but when you get in, you see the top, obviously that was more work. So we weren't gonna do that. Let's see what else we have. So this is 16 100 watt panels, probably cost them 1600 bucks just for the, the panels, cause that's uh, the cost. Uh, low voltage have to be run in series, parallel combinations, which I do with larger panels, but uh, also each of these gets eight eight uh, mounting points anywhere and everywhere on the top of the bus. So that's eight times 16 holes plus the custom in, uh, entry gland. That's a, it's a big mess and it still has a lot of sun beating on the roof. And this is why you use residential panels, block out all of that sun hitting the roof increase your thermal efficiency uh, and it's about half the cost of these trash panels uh, slapped in with self tappers and and uh, silicone it looks like 
And it looks like some die core self-leveling to secure the uh, the lines. You know, some zip ties here and there. Uh, this is the leaky, the leaky, oh yeah, they just gooped up, put a bunch of goop down. Oh yeah, it's all oozing out. So then they they made sure they sprayed everything rugged with Sika, or not Sika Flex, sorry. They're not that sophisticated, but uh, Flex Seal. Sorry, it's hot. There's a nice cluster, all held down with the Dicor self-leveling, it looks like. And here's the entry gland, super sealed. Let's see, no, that's right. Uh, yeah, so this is something's bolted through here. Uh, that's obviously not going to work out. And pretty much the same all the way down. I don't know the format they have for these what the layout is as far as series parallel but looks like they just gooped up these I can hardly see any silicone there they got plenty right here in a pile though that's all melted not even getting hard at this point yep it's a mess hot mess Just came in after a rain. That's one window. I'm assuming it's the window. Oh, it's definitely the window. Skylight. Skylight, window, roof window. None of that wood's treated. And it looks like it's right there. Oh, definitely right. There it is. And now to the electrical. This is the part that I and most competent and experienced with having done solar and i've seen some of the videos of them building this but more on that in a moment bunch of looks like agm batteries they were wired with like two or four gauge which is not correct the second solar guy who came in after the renogy charge controller was sparking. Um, he came in, the second guy put in a Lynx distributor and the Victron charge controller and rewired the panels on the roof, which I assume were wired in series in a way that brought in too much voltage. That is speculation. But the solar guy with some experience came in, put four aught on these cables. I'm assuming he put in this master fuse. I haven't looked on the size on that yet. And that all feeds the Lynx. I'll open that up in a moment. And that comes over here to the uh, Renogy inverter charger, which I have to go look through some of the details. Um, looks like we got some typical schooly wiring down here. Wire nuts not supposed to be used in mobile. I'll open that up here. Right, I pulled the cover off here of this. I guess it's a transfer switch. I don't, it's it's a hot mess. Um, but this, you got a wide screen. This, I guess with 10, 30 amp cable is coming down here and feeding, feeding three other circuits, they're all tied together. Now in the text conversations I, that, that I was uh, shown, they said they do everything to RV code. So that's that's not true. And so then here's another one. Uh, they're getting 10-3. They've got, I guess those are 15 amp circuits. So somehow 15 amp circuits are feeding each of these circuits with 10-3. So 30 amp cable connected to a 15 amp breaker, but then it's splitting, sharing three 20 amp lines. I suppose that's not unsafe in terms of overrunning the wire, but it certainly isn't to code with RV standards.
all this is not how you do it and it's showing clear ignorance as to how electricals run in a bus. And of course, like we saw outside, these guys really aren't connected with that protection like they should here. They're just sitting in there loose. Like they've got the grabber there, but it's it's not secured. Solar's just being punched through the roof. Uh, down through here, cables. There's not a double uh, breaker, which is what's required per code. Even though they said they do everything RV, RV code, built to RV code. And this is going to the middle of the links. So I'm assuming that's a ground that's uh, two watt down to whatever this is. So I'm assuming the guy who patched it up didn't have access to chassis ground. This is the best he could do. So I don't blame him too much for that. Um, but this is supposed to be. I believe no smaller than one wire size, the, uh, smaller than the main circuit. So this would probably be okay, the two, because this is all four, but this is not. All right, I finished up the, the bus walkthrough yesterday and got some extra information that I had to do some digging on. There's a failure with the original charge controller, which was a Renogy matched the uh, 3000 watt inverter charger. So I'm guessing it was some combination kit. And 1600 watts on the roof. I did some research and I happened to have a video uh, from the client from the install where they kind of did a walkthrough. And so I captured a screenshot there of the charge controller. I did some looking back at dimensions and, and all that to figure out what was going on. But they essentially cl uh, claimed that she held down the breaker that's going from the charge controller to the batteries, uh, which is the only thing that that was in place anyways that doesn't make sense to me <clears throat> uh because it was actually the the probably on the side of the solar coming in because those wires got replaced branch connectors got added and i was doing the math to figure out what happened but basically uh Renogy makes their largest inverter i'm sorry their largest charge controller is a 100 amp hour model their rover and it handles 1300 watts of solar at 150 volts max and it's 12 inches, uh, 12 inches wide. So I did a little measuring with the phone, as you can see, and I found out that, that well, that was not the model they had in there. At best, it was the eight inch model, uh, which is their 60, which handles 800 watts of solar. And so who knows how many volts it was being sent in at, and because each panel is like 20 volts or something. So in reality, they made a mistake from the front end. They had a solar guy come in who seemingly knows what he's doing. He put on a Victron that can handle all that power and the links, but it was to the tune of something like 20, uh, well over $2,000. And they convinced her that she was at fault, but they were going to be nice guys and pay for half of it. So she was out 1200 something dollars because of this mistake they made from the front end. 